Hello and welcome to this sixth video in the series of 10 involving how to set up the product configuration models and looking through the features of that. My name is Jens Christensen. I'm the program manager for Western Computer. What we will look at today is the possibility of setting up bomb lines and route operations. So the ability to set up bomb lines is helping to dynamically create the production bomb once you go through the configuration. And the same goes with the route operations. So there are a few, obviously a few prerequisites for those things. The bomb line needs to be assigned an item number or an attribute that the, the containing a value of an item. And the same for the route operations, you need to have an operations or you would have to have an attribute that resembles or that contains the value of an operation. The last video, we talked a little bit about how we can use the attributes to define some of the values when we set up the bomb lines and operations. And I would like to go into that a little bit more. So you can see here, there are a few lines here with bomb lines and not all of them are necessary active or will necessarily create a bomb line once the configuration has been performed. One of the examples you see here is that we have a line for a metal grill that associates this item number here, and we have a cloth grill that associates this item here. And only one of these will be valid when you run through the configuration, and the other one will be invalid and therefore not be a bomb line on the production bomb. Another thing that we can take a look at, so let's try to take a look at this line, for example, is when you look into the bomb line details, you see, for those of you who have worked with bomb setups before, you can see this is, resembles a little bit of what we already know. You can set up some values that need to be added to the bomb line details. And how it works here in the product configurator is that you first activate the field and then you define the value. For the vendor account, you obviously you can go in and you, there's a drop down to the vendor account because it's looking into the value. But you could also change that to attribute and then it would look into an attribute field that you have in your configuration. The same thing goes with the route operations. Let me try to show you an example of that. So if we go to the dimension on this cloth grill here, we see that this the color dimension is activated and it's set to be attribute. So that means that depending on the selection you make in the front grill field or uh, attribute when you do the configuration determines that color in there. So let me close that here and we see the same things down on the route operations, the same setup as you do for the bomb lines where you can control these values or properties of the route operation. And the same here, we also have an example here for the assembly runtime where this, where the runtime value is defined based on the calculated attribute that we have here. So try to trace that back here. We have the assembly runtime here. That attribute is calculated in our calculations set up a little bit further up here. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. You see that the target attribute is the assembly runtime. This is the calculation. And in our view, we can actually see that the assembly runtime is an attribute that has set to be hidden. That's because when you go through the configuration or the user goes through the configuration, they don't really care about that field because it's automatically populated based on your other selections and it's only used in the route operation setup. Now I'm going to unhide this just so we can follow it through the process once we create a production order for this item. So I'm going to save this, the change here, and let me just go ahead and go on to the production control and let's create a new production order for this item. So I'm going to go ahead and click a new production order and I'm going to put in the item number. And once you see the item number gets here, you see already here, the system understands that it's a configuration, a configuration model. So I'm going to go ahead and configure the production order now. So I'm clicking the configure production order and we will start by running through this. So. So I'm going to see oak, front grill is, let's take something else. Let's take a white and select a black front grill. Let's do the speaker height, it's 14. And you see now that the assembly runtime is calculated. Let's do an accessory item and click OK. So now we'll wait till it's processing this configuration here. So now, we actually already now see we have a bomb number, a production bomb, and we have a route number here. 
Let's take a look at the bomb and see if we can see that dimension that we had set up before. So I'm going in here and I'm looking in to see my item. So this is the item for the cloth grill and we see the dimension has been pushed based on what I've selected. If we go back again, take a look at the route number and let's see if we can find the lines in here, route details and take a look at the assembly and let's take a look at the times we see now that this 1.25 has been populated in here so doing that you can actually control the setup of your bomb and your routes once you create your configuration so that's all for now join me next time where we will talk a little bit more about subcomponents and user requirements and have a great day thank you bye